Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello podcast land. Hello guys. Give me two seconds here to situate my body today because I got something extra, extra special to say. And I have some good news. My buddy Duke is here. He is totally passed out right now. Totally passed out. And so here's my good news for you. It's not really my good news. It's Duke's good news. Duke became a big brother today, yesterday. He became a big brother, and now he's got big brother responsibilities. <laughs> I keep telling him, look, buddy, you got big brother responsibilities now. You got to take care of the little guy. We got ourselves a little Aussie poo cockapoo mixture. His name is Charlie. He's uh, new to the Cusslick family over here, and we just love this little guy, don't we, buddy? We love you. So we're getting him used to the family. He's getting used to us. We're getting used to him. Duke and him were not so fond yesterday. But today they're playing all over the living room. So thankfully that they're bonding together nicely. And Charlie's just adorable. I'll post a picture of him to my Instagram. So you guys that are on the show can see the Instagram pictures of Charlie. Hold on, buddy. Let me pick you up. Let me pick you up just a tiny, tiny bit. That's okay. I got you, buddy. That's okay. So he's our little buddy, and we love him to death. I should say love him to life. Come here, buddy. Give me a minute. Let me pick him up differently so I can position my body differently. There you go, buddy. There you go. Lay down that way, buddy. It's okay. Because the other way my foot was going numb. Hey, we're here on the show. I'm going to do my best to do a show with Charlie in my lap. Duke's passed out. They were playing all over the living room today. My wife showed me a video, and he just wore out from playing. You know what that means? That means that Daddy here gets all the pleasures of having two little boys, two little fur boys, and I don't have to do much for playing with them anymore. Don't get me wrong. I'll still play with them because I love them to do uh, life. But Duke and Charlie get to play together and have fun as brothers. And they're just adorable together. I'm going to post even some video footage my wife took from her phone. I'm going to take some, post some videos to my Instagram. It's just, they're just adorable together. I had a problem, we had a problem yesterday. Because see, the way Duke is, Duke is one of those uh, territorial people or, or dogs where this is my mommy, this is my daddy, this is where I sleep on the bed with mommy and daddy, this is my house, you can't touch it. And he'll growl at them yesterday, he'll bark and growl and rawr, and all that stuff. But today they were playing in the living room, and they were both running around. And the funny thing is that Duke would uh, grab the big antler, Charlie would grab the small, and tear it to pieces, and as soon as Charlie grabs the small one, Duke will grab the big one and then run, grab the small one from Charlie and then run back to go get the big one and wouldn't give Charlie any of them. Finally, Duke gave in and let, let Charlie have one of his antlers. Duke is a very special boy to us. We love Duke to bits and pieces and we love Charlie too. We added him to our family this uh, yesterday. He's just been a blessing to us. And we love them both. I just took Duke on his little walk today where we talked about all the big responsibilities he had to do has to do because he's got a big boy now. He's got big he's got a small brother he's got to take care of. So I'll give him all a little talk about how he's got big brother responsibilities and he's got to teach him things and all that fun stuff and Charlie keeps lugging up at me. Hi Charlie. Hi buddy. Charlie doesn't know anything. He doesn't know his name yet. He just knows when I whistle, he looks up at me. So we're going to teach him. We're going to do things. But it's just nice to see what God does in 
our lives just through simple things like animals. Animals are one of God's creations that God knows that. Look, I know I'm not going to see Charlie or Duke when I go to heaven. But you know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about. It. I'm not going to care to see them in heaven. Why? Because we too focused on worshiping God. But God created animals like this for us to be friends with, so that way down here we have somebody, or have something that can comfort us too. Yes, God should be our ultimate comfort, but He sends little animals like this just to, just to hang around and just to have fun with, and that's just what God wants us to do with these little creatures, these little babies. It's just amazing to see what God can do. I love you, Charlie. But enough with the about my little dog Charlie over here in Duke. Hey, we're here, we're live, we're on the show, and we're going to we're going to do something great today. We're going to read through the Book of John. Uh oh, Charlie. Give me a second, guys. You bumped your head, buddy. You should see how he's laying on my chest. Hi, buddy. Can Daddy have you? Come here, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. So he's laying on my chest, which is really cool because I just love this guy, too. But like I said, Duke is my absolute favorite. So let's get into a few brief announcements. Number one, join us. Yes, I said that. Join us. Wait, what is today? Today is Monday. Yes, join us for the Monday show. Every single Monday we'll be doing a message show. Join us now, this Wednesday, for Outside the Classroom Wednesdays, where we take Pastor Michael and Jenna Hines' message, messages from Outside the Classroom to those who need the gospel each and every day. Join us for Outside the Classroom Wednesdays. Join us for the Worship Saturdays on Saturday nights. Join us for that as well. And, hey, that's it. That's our announcements. I want to do one thing. One thing's for sure. I want to do this. I want to, I want to shout out to a buddy of mine at work, Mr. Uh, Mr. Roger from Henry's Store. I always tell him as a joke, and it's the truth, they should call it Henry's Place. Not Henry's Place, Roger's Place. I think that would be a great name for the store, Roger's Place, because Roger is the one who runs the store. So they call it Roger's Place. But according to what he told me is that back in the day when they first opened up the Nestle plant, plant in Solon, Ohio, the actual person who ran it back in the day was Henry. So they call it Henry's Store or Henry's Corner Store. So I think they should call it Roger's Place. That'd be a great, unique name for the store because Roger does not run it. So, hey, Roger, this is a shout out to you from Nestle in Solon, Ohio at Henry's Store. Henry's Corner Store. So, hey, Raj, I'm glad you could tune into this episode to hear, at least hear something, because I use it to my listeners all the time. This is what I do when I get a new listener. I give them one shout-out during the during a, a, an episode that falls after they start listening. So, hey, Roger, this is for you. So, let's do this. Let me grab my Bible. Give me a second, guys. I gotta grab my stuff. Charlie, Dave's gonna get in his pocket for a minute, buddy. You're okay, buddy. Daddy loves you. Give me a second, guys. This is a little hard to do while I got dogs in my lap. It's okay, Charlie. I got you. There we go. Okay. Let's start out with our first song on the list. And then we'll get into our message in just a brief moment. But our first song is 
will carry on by none other than the K. Dennis Burton Truth Worship Band. Enjoy will carry on by, again, by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band. Enjoy will carry on. There you go, guys. That was We'll Carry On by none other than the K. Dana Spirit and Truth Worship Band. I got my little headphone set close to my microphone and it went, yee, it made a hissing sound. Give me a second, guys. So I got my headphone close to my microphone and it made a hissing sound like the uh, old speakers used to do. Come on, come here, Charlie. Let's pick you back up. Come on, you're going to fall down, buddy. You're going to fall down. There you go, buddy. Stay like that. We don't want you falling down, buddy. Duke, I'm sorry, buddy. Lay down. Duke. Duke. Lay down, buddy. I'm so sorry. Daddy didn't know that was going to happen like that. Anyways, we're going to get into our reading of the book of John. All my little guests on the show are all awake now. Hi, Charlie. 
So let's get into our reading today. And we're going to read from the book of John, chapter 17. If Charlie doesn't start eating the book, pages of my Bible, he's going to be right with my arm. So I'm going to have to really do this as careful as I can. Duke, lay down, buddies. Duke, come on, buddy. I'm sorry. Lay down. I don't know. He just, now he's just, there he goes. Look, buddy. Daddy, sorry. You didn't mean to make it like that. Okay. Book of John. Chapter 17. Take off my glasses so I can see better. I see better with my glasses off on close-up stuff. And better with my glasses on far away. So we got Charlie laying right next to the Bible. And Duke's in his little stroller we put him in. We got a full house on the show today. We got we got an entire fur audience. It's okay, Charlie. It's okay. It's just Daddy's book. Chapter 17 of the book of John. Jesus prays for himself. Let me see what Duke's doing just for a minute here. He's probably going to lay down again. There he goes. Jesus prays for himself. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have which you have well, my microphone's having a little bit of a squeak sound. That's Charlie. He's breathing here a little heavy today. Okay, I finished the work which you have given me to do, and now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So what is what is what are we reading right here? So Jesus is praying for himself. And he's praying to the Father. He says, Jesus it says, Jesus spoke these words. Lift up his head, eyes. Excuse me, lift up his eyes to heaven. And said, Father, the hour has come. So first off, he's saying the hour has come. Okay, he knew that he was going to be dying soon on the cross. He said, the hour has come. He says, glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given to him. So, he said, look, glorify me, Father, because you've given me the power to give as many people as I want to eternal life. But here's the thing. Jesus has the power to give you, give every, anyone he wants to eternal life. But the key in the success in the receiving that eternal life is what? Forgiveness. As many as he wants to, he gives eternal life to. Now, does that mean that you can live any old way you want to and you get eternal life? Absolutely not. Now, does that mean that if you live any way you want to, but at the very end, you're dying on your deathbed, you say, God, forgive me. I've sinned in your presence. I'm sorry. Will you get eternal life? Absolutely. Will your, will your mansion be bare? Absolutely. Why? Because you, you did nothing for God. That's what you call fire insurance. See, it's okay to be praying at the end of your life and you're dying and at the end of your deathbed, you pray. You, fine, good. You made it to heaven. But that's fire insurance. You want more than just fire insurance. See, there's different types of insurance. There's basic insurance, and there's really good insurance. For instance, 
when I was on the government Medicare program, right? Government uh, health insurance. That was good insurance, right? Okay insurance. It didn't cover much. It covered everything but 20%, so I still had to pay 20% out of my pocket. Which, don't get me wrong, at the time was great because I didn't have that much health insurance. I didn't have any money back then, hardly. I had Social Security. But it was good enough to be able to uh, be able to go to places and see doctors and things like that, right? And prescriptions were only a dollar, depending on which ones I got, if they're generic or whatnot, name brand. But now that I work at Nestle, I got great insurance. It covers all my surgeries. It covers all my hospital visits. I barely pay anything to go to a hospital now if I have to. I pay like 50 bucks for a copay at a doctor office. My $7,000 insurance... My $7,000 finger surgery for trigger finger was completely covered. I owed nothing. Now, my pinky finger is going to probably have to go to surgery for trigger finger. And I'm going to owe absolutely nothing. So, see, there's a difference. There's good insurance or okay insurance, and then there's great insurance. And see, see, there's two, like I said, two types of insurance. Now, with, with going to heaven, there is two types of insurance to get when you get to heaven. There's good insurance or okay insurance which is you make it into the pearly gates and you know you escape the fire but there's great insurance where you get your mansion that's got gold and diamonds and chairs and studded stuff all that great stuff that you're going to get when you get there for what you did down to here see it says lay your lay up your treasures in heaven see lay up your treasures in heaven but if you don't lay up your treasures in heaven your mansion is going to be bare that's just Okay, insurance or good insurance. It's not great insurance. You don't want fire insurance. You want fire insurance plus. You want to be able to get to heaven and you want to be able to sit in that chair that's got diamond studs all over it. If that makes sense to you. So, uh, glorify your son as you may have given him authority. As you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life. Now, he's praying, say, look, glorify me because I'm the one that's going to give as many people as I choose to eternal life. Key word is he choose to. Doesn't mean every single person on the face of this earth is going to have eternal life. Like I said, the key to eternal life is what? Repentance. And that doesn't mean I repent and in 10 seconds later I'm back to sinning again. I repent Ten seconds later, no. Repenting means this. Look, God, I know I screwed up. I am sorry. Forgive me. And cleanse you from all unrighteousness. There you go. Now, does that mean that down the road, you know, five, ten years down the road or more, or less, could be, say, you know, six months, that you're never going to do that again? You're never going to sin like that again? Of course not. Do you think the devil throws do you do you think the devil does just leaves you alone? No. When you come see, the devil leaves you alone when you're part of his kingdom. When you become part of the body of Christ, the devil doesn't leave you alone. He attacks you completely. Why? Because he knows what's going to happen in your life when you become a Christian. When you become a God fearing Christian and love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, he knows exactly what he's, what's going to happen with you. Think about it. I saw a magnet once that said you should live every day to where when you wake up, the devil goes, oh my God, Andrew just woke up. He's about to attack me again. Don't wake up every morning where the devil goes, huh, Andrew just woke up. Oh, he's going to go back to sleep. He's going to be spiritually dead. He's going to look at this and view this on the internet. He's not supposed to. He's going to go over here. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. The devil wants to say all those things about you. But you should live every day to where when you wake up, he goes, oh crap, Andrew just woke up. He's about to attack me with the blood of Christ. So, uh, glorify your son, who may glorify you, as you have given him the authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Now, he's also saying, glorify me so that I can glorify you. See, Jesus can't glorify for God the Father. God the Father doesn't glorify him. See, the Trinity works in this way. It's God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father honors God the Son. God the Son honors God the Father. And then God the Father and God the Son honors the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit honors them back. 
You get what I'm trying to say here? So, he says, honor me so I can honor you who gives me the power to forgive people from all their unrighteousness. And how does he forgive people? Simple, he dies on the cross. Dies on a cross on Mount Calvary that you and me might be saved. Eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So, what does he say? He says, look, glorify me, because I'm the one that's going to give them eternal life, but through this eternal life, God, they're going to know who you are and who I am through this eternal life. So glorify me that I can still do this, right? So he's asked to be glorified so that everyone that he comes in contact with the, by giving them eternal life will know God, the true God. If you think about it, what did he say when, when Lazarus was dead? He prayed, right? What did he pray? He says, Father, let this not just be me showing off. I'm paraphrasing it right now. He says, but let this be that everyone around us will know you. See, he prayed again right now in this in chapter 17 of the book of John. He said he prayed. He said, he said, lift me up. Glorify me so I can glorify you. And then he also says that I, that you give me power to give eternal life that they may know you. See, Jesus always prayed not just for a selfish prayer like, you know, glorify me so I can glorify you so that they can glorify me. No, glorify me so I can glorify you that they, through the salvation I'm about to give because you give me the power to do so, that they might know you. Because Jesus knows that not everyone knew, knew God. See, there is a difference between knowing and knowing God. You can know God. You can know him in your head. You can know who he is. You can know he's you know, the creator of the earth, but really knowing God with all your heart, that's a totally different story. And then he goes on to say, uh, so that they may know the true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So he's saying not only that they will know you, but that they'll know me. And what is he, why does he pray that they'll know him? Not because he wants to be some super famous guy, Look, I'm Jesus, you gotta worship me, I'm famous, I'm popular. No. He says, know you so they can and that they will know me. Why? Let me read that to you again. He says, uh uh Jesus Christ. Okay, it says, uh, so that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So they're, he's saying, look, so they can know you and know me. Why? Because Jesus wants them to have a relationship with him. That's the point. Know me so they can have a relationship with me. Because when you have a relationship with Jesus, you commune with the Father. Because again, I bring it back to the scriptures that Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So if you have a relationship with Jesus, what are you doing? You're having a relationship with the Father. Think about it. So glorify, okay, glorify me so that they, 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 that they may know you and so they may know the one true God and that they may know me. Okay? That you have sent. I glorified you on the earth. So what is he saying? He says, look, I praised you, I glorified you, I honored you on the earth by doing what you have said to do. He says, I glorified you on the earth, I have finished the work which you have given me to do. He says, I did what you asked. You said to make disciples, I've done them. You've done that. You said feed the 5,000, I've done that. You said baptize in the name of Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I've done that. So I finished the work which you have given me to do. So what is he saying first? He says, I glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory, with the glory which I have with you before the world was. 
He's not just saying glorify me and uh, glorify you, but the gl but glorify. Hold on, guys. Charlie's trying to get laying down better. He says, but glorify us together with the glory that I had with you before the world was. Because Jesus was always there. Jesus and God the Father were two people who were always there no matter what. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have manifested your name to the, to, to the men. I have manifested your name to the men. Whom you have given me out of the world, that they were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given you to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them and have known Surely that I come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. So what is he saying? He's praying for his disciples. He says, look. He says, uh, let me get to the other page so I can reread part of it, so I can get the notion for you guys. I have manifested your name to the men. as like, look. God, I did exactly what you said. You said go out to all the world, make disciples. I've done that. Okay? I've get, I've given your name to them whom you have given me out of the world they were yours you gave them to me so what is he saying he says look I took them from the world hold on Charlie you're falling buddies you're falling buddies you stay there that's good boy he's saying look I took them from the world and I gave them the gospel and gave them to you. They were yours. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. He's like, look, Father. They kept your word. They did everything you asked them to do. Now they have known all these things which you have given me. So now what he's saying, look, they know all the truth, Father. I taught them what you asked me to teach them. It says, have given me from you. The words which you have given me, and they have received them. So it's like, they know what you've told me, Father. Because look, you gave it to me, and I gave it to them, and now they know this. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours, and, and all mine are yours. And yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but those are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I am with them in this world, I keep them in your name. Those whom you give me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except for the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the and these things I speak where I lost my train of thought. Uh, my place. Come on, Charlie. These things, Charlie. Charlie? Duke? Duke? Lay down, buddy. Duke? Lay down. And these things I speak in the, in, the, in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Duke? Calm down, buddies. Give me just a second, guys. I got to calm these little guys down here while we're doing the show here. Give me two seconds. So 
Sorry about that. Okay, back to what we're trying to read here. Um, except for some perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So first off, they're saying, I kept them in your name. Those whom you've given me, I've kept, and none of them is lost except for the son of perdition. Now, it's according to what I know, the son of perdition, as far as what I know, let me make sure I got this right, is Judas Iscariot. So let me look this up real quick. I'm pretty sure. Who is the son of perdition? Come on, Charlie. No lies. Yes, Judas Iscariot says that all of the disciples, none has been lost except for the son of perdition. Yes, Judas Iscariot is the son of perdition. So he says, look, Every one of them has kept your word except for Judas. And we all know that Judas portrayed this, uh, not portrayed, but betrayed Jesus with a kiss, right? So he's saying every one of them has kept your word except for the son of perdition. Now, I will say this, not every single person in this world will be saved. Because he said, I wish that all men be saved, but not all men will be saved. So he says, all of them have kept your word except for the son of perdition. Again, Judas Iscariot. Um, hold on. Charlie, nobody. Uh, where am I at now? Uh, I have given them your word and none of none of the word. Wait. I've given them. No, Charlie, Charlie. I speak the words of the human I have given them your word, and the word has, no, that they may be one, and we are one while I was with them. Charlie, nobody. For them who you have given me, for they are yours, and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them, now no longer in the world, but those are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those who you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I lift them in the world, while I left them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those who you have given me, I have kept, and none of them are is lost except the son of perdition, Judas Iscariot that the scripture might be fulfilled. So see, Judas had to portray Jesus. Because the scripture says that even the prophecies back in the day said that Jesus would be betrayed by a kiss. And see, Judas had to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver for the scriptures to be fulfilled. So the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you in those things that speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So he's saying, look, he says, I'm praying for them that they, he says, look, uh, the scripture may be fulfilled, but now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have, they, that they may have my joy fulfilled. So now he's praying that they have joy and joy unspeakable, right? So he's praying for their joy now and their happiness. Mm -hmm. No, Charlie. Okay. Uh, to my joy fulfilled in themselves, I have given them your word, and the word has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. 
they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Okay. I can't read that word. Sanctify. S-A-N-C-T-I-F-Y. S-A-N-C-T-I-F-Y. Sanctify. There you go. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. He said, look, he says, I pray that they're sanctified because they've done exactly what you wanted them to do. They've studied your word. They preached your word. They even went out and made disciples. Think about it, guys. How many times the disciples get arrested how many times did the disciples go to jail and Paul and Silas was in jail, praising God, right? Jail, do- jail cell doors open. Why were they in jail? For preaching the word of God. So he said, look, sanctify them. They did exactly what you've asked me to tell them to do. Jesus prays for all believers. This is for us now. I do not pray for those alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they all may be one as you. So he's saying, look, I pray for everyone who believes the testimony of the disciples. What is God's word? God's word is your testimony. Your testimony, my going to the gay clubs every every night, hanging out with all the men and doing things with men that I shouldn't be doing, right? And then God delivering me from that. That's my testimony. But you know what that is? God's word. Why? Because in all of that story, when it comes down to everything, when it comes down to the brass tacks of everything, guess what? It's God's word. Because think about it. What does the Bible say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? What does that mean? That means, look, God forgave you of all that junk. Now, is that still part of your past? Absolutely. But did God forgive you of it? Yes. So I'm going to keep reading. Uh, I do not pray for those alone, but also for those who will believe in me through the word, that they all may be one as you. Father, as you, Father, are in me. I am in you. Again, me and the Father are one. That they also may be one in us, that the word may that that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I've given them that they may be one just as we are one again i and the father are one he's praying though that that the world believes where are we at here um the world may believe that you've sent me and that and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. He's saying, look, he's praying for people that they believe in him. Because when they believe in him, then they know that God sent him. I give them, And they may be one just as we are one. I in them, again, he's, look, he says, I in them, meaning Jesus is in their heart. I in them. And you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. What is he saying here? He says, look, he says, I in them, you in me, that they may be what? Made perfect. So see, in order to be perfect, you don't do great things. You don't do good things. You don't feed the homeless. You don't clothes anybody, you don't give anybody to, you don't do anything. But one thing that makes you perfect is believing in God. Believing in Jesus Christ. It says right here, I in them is living, God living in your heart. Is Jesus in your heart. That's what makes you perfect. I in them, you, what is he saying here? Jesus lives in their heart and you in me God lives in Jesus' heart. You and me, that they may be made perfect in one, 
and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So he's saying, look, love, he's saying, look. He's praying for them that um, I give them that they may be one as I am one. He's saying, look, I and them, you and me, that they may be free. He's praying that God will forgive them of all their sins. And he says, if I'm in them and you're in me, that makes them what? Perfect. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Father, I, de I desire that they also, that they also whom you given me may be with me where I am. Hold on, guys. Give me another second, guys. Okay, God, move Danny's arm, buddy. Sorry. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory with which you have given me. So he's saying, look, I pray, Lord, that you save them, you sanctify them, and you allow them to go with me to heaven. He's praying for salvation. Again, this book is all full of nothing but salvation. For you have loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And those have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will, and will declare it that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So he's saying, look, he's saying, I'm praying for their salvation and I'm praying that the love that is in me from you is in them. And not only that the love that you gave me is in them, that the love that you gave, that I am in them is also as well. So he's saying, look, forgive them for they not know what they do, Father. He says, forgive them, cleanse them, keep them from all unrighteousness. And Lord, let your love that you give to me be in them and I in them. So he prayed, not just for himself, not just for his friends and family, but he prayed for the world. And see, Come here, Charlie. So see, we as Christians, I know. Come on, buddy. It's okay. It is okay. Lay down next to Daddy like that, buddy. It's okay. It is okay to pray for you. Okay? It's okay to pray for your family. And it's okay to do all those things to pray for your friends and family. But we as Christians need to pray for the world. We need to pray that the world becomes saved sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and then God and Jesus live in them. Now, how does God and Jesus live in them? Believe in Christ. Think about it. If God lives in Jesus, right, and you believe in Jesus, and Jesus lives in you, guess who else lives in you? God the Father. Why? Again, me and the Father are what? One. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If the Father, if you, if I live in you and the Father lives in me, the Father lives in what? You. So he prayed for not just himself, not just his friends and his family, but he also prayed for the world. And we need to do that. We need to be more like Jesus these days and pray for the world. Look at all this stuff and tragedy that's going on in this world. Think about it, guys. There's chaos going on and we're too busy to pray for the world. We'll pray for ourselves when we're sick. Oh, Lord, I'm sick. Please forgive me. Please help me. We'll pray when dear old mom is, you know, sick and she's got, you know, some kind of sickness, cold. She might have a disease. You know, we'll pray for when pastor is sick and when pastor's wife is sick and the worship leader is sick. We'll pray for all these different friends and family and all these things. But when it comes to the world, 
We're too busy to pray for those kind of things. Oh, well, I, I, I got to go to work, or I got to this, or I got to that, or in my case, I got a podcast to do. See, we need to stop being so busy in this world, and we need to pray for the world. The Bible says to pray for the world. We just read that. Jesus prayed for the world. What does it also say? It says, pray for your elders and leaders in power. So we need to pray for the world. Not just ourselves, not just our friends, and not just our families. We need to pray for the world. And Jesus just did. And see, when the Bible says we need to be like Christ, that means when Jesus prayed for the world, we need to be like Jesus, and we need to pray for the world too. What does my spiritual mom do every Saturday morning? She prays for the world. She prays for Jerusalem. She prays for Iran. She prays for all these different things. She even prays for the war war that's going on between uh, the Ukraine and the Russians, right? So she prays for all this stuff. But we need to do that on a regular basis. It's great to pray for ourselves. It's great to pray for family and friends. But what about the world? What about the unchurched, as my pastor Jerry Piscopo used to say, or his real name, Gennaro Piscopo? What about the unchurched? What about the people who don't go to church, who don't know who God is, and are going straight to heaven? What about them? Why do we not pray for them? (coughs) Sorry, Charlie. I like, I love it when people say, I'll pray for you, and then walk away. See, I say that. I say, I'll pray for you, and then walk away. What's the first thing that I do when I walk away from them? I take two seconds. I say, Lord, whatever's going on with them, you heal them, you fix them, whatever the case is, you do what you need to do in them so they can be free from this. In Jesus' name, amen. Right? I pray for them. Don't go and say, I'll pray for you and don't do anything. Pray for them. Why? Because you just said, I'm going to pray for you. The first thing you do is you go off, you do something else, you totally forget about it, then 10 weeks down the road, Oh, I forgot to pray for you. I'm so sorry. Well, it's over with now. I'm feeling better now. Thank you. See, I like when people say, I'll pray for you, and then don't. That's why the first thing you need to do is to what? Pray. As soon as you say, I'm going to pray for you, stop right then and there, and then pray. If you don't feel comfortable praying in front of people, then say, I'll pray for you, walk away, and as you go back to do whatever you were doing, pray as you're getting there. Like when I... When I'm doing my orders and people say, pray for me, I walk to my orders, I pray while I walk to my orders. That way when I get to my orders, I'm already done praying at work. So see, we need to pray for the world. It's important to pray for all the people of the world. Because Jesus says in his word, he says, look, I desire that all men be saved. He doesn't say, I, uh, I want some men to be saved or partial men to be saved. He says, I desire that all men be saved. And so we need to pray for the world. Well, that's our message for today. We're going to get into some more praise and worship. Our next song on the list is Tears Are a Language, but none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy Tears Are a Language. Oh 
Tears are a language that God understands. Tears are a language God There you go, guys. It was Tears Are a Language by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Our next song on the list, we got three more songs to play, then we'll pray, then we'll play two, then we'll pray, then we'll play the last one. Our next song is not track one by unknown artist. It is I Do Declare by none other than Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith and my guest on the show. Enjoy Tears Are a Language. Sorry, guys. Enjoy I Do Declare.
There you go, guys. That was I Do Declare by none other than my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Let's get into our next song, and then we'll pray next. Our next song is So Good to Me by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Enjoy So Good to Me.
There you go, guys. That was So Good to Me by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Let's pray, Lord. We only come back before, Lord. We thank you, Lord, you are God and God alone, that you're having your way in this ministry. I thank you, Lord. Now, this might be something that most people don't pray about, but I'm going to. I thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to bring Charlie into our lives, that we could save him from the despair of not being adopted by nobody and being possibly killed at his young age. He's only six months old, guys, at his young age, and that he's going to now have a, a beautiful family. He's going to be part of the Cuslicks, and he's going to have a full life ahead of him and that we're going to be able to Help him grow and learn and live in this thing called the world. I thank you, Lord, that you have saved him, that you didn't let him just go and die. He was killed because no one wanted him, Lord. That we took him in because we wanted him, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you're blessing everyone in the sound of my voice. <coughs> Give them their heart's desire as long as not be what selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal people. I ask you to heal people from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's atrophy that's not bad no more. Heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that's not bad no more. And heal my sister-in-law's heart that it's not bad no more as well. Whatever else is ailing her, Lord, heal that so it's not bad. And Lord, heal people from diseases that contract themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. Why? Because when you... Heal them, shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture. It says, you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed right straight through the door. Because you're all spirit at that moment. It says you passed right straight through the door. Hold on. Because you're all spirit at that moment. You said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. What did Thomas do? He got on his knees and said, truly, you're the son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But it doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to, they have to see it to believe it. Because they'll say, if you did it then, you'll do it again. Because your word, of Lord, your word again, Lord, says you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen, ba doom, boom, boom. Amen, doom, doom, doom. Amen, amen, amen. Our last song on the list is The Beginning by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy the beginning. Just reach out your hand to Jesus.
Satan's kingdom, it will fail, and let the loving Savior guide you against all evil you'll prevail. You're saved only by believing. It's as simple as can. Christ one day left heaven, came to earth and died for you and me. He wants you to know he loves you, and he wants to cleanse your sin. He's right here now just to save you. Just reach out your hand to Jesus. All his promises are true. There you go, guys. That was the beginning by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. <clears throat> Dude, that's the end of our show for today, guys. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it as much as we did, as much as I did. Two things to remind you. Number one, we're getting that app back into the Play Store ASAP. We're getting it up there as soon as we can. I got to work on a few kinks with the Play Store. Number two, ask your Alexa device. Say, Alexa, open podcast portal. And she say, welcome to... Or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. We also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. 
And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord in all your ways, two, lean at your own understandings, and three, in all of your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>